So let's talk about atomic radius. What is the atomic radius of an atom? Well, imagine drawing an atom as a circle. And the radius of that circle is the distance between the center and any edge on the circle. So therefore, that's also the atomic radius of an atom. Now I'm going to use bromine as an example. Now how do we go about calculating the atomic radius of an atom? So bromine consists of two bromine atoms and the distance between the nuclei of the bromine atoms in this molecule is 228 picometers. So the atomic radius of one bromine atom is going to be half of that value. So it's 114 picometers. And that's how the atomic radius of the elements are calculated. If you know the distance of the molecule, the distance between the two nuclei of a, of a molecule, then you simply take half of that distance and then you have the radius of the atom. Now what else do we need to know about atomic radius? You need to know that as you travel towards the right in the periodic table, the atomic radius decreases. The size of the atoms gets smaller as you go from left to right, generally speaking. Now, of course, you might have some discontinuities as you go from left to right, but the general trend is that atoms get smaller going from left to right. So this would be a lithium atom. This is going to be beryllium and then boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So let me put these elements here. So as you can see, the size of the atom decreases as you go towards the right. Now I'm going to put some numbers too to go with this. So lithium has an atomic radius of 152 picometers. Beryllium is 113, boron is 88, carbon 77, nitrogen is 70, oxygen is 66, fluorine is 64. And I believe neon is slightly bigger than fluorine, it's like 69. So as you can see, there's some exceptions, but generally speaking, as you go from left to right, the atomic radius decreases. The question is why? Why do atoms get smaller? So all of these elements they exist in the same energy level, that is the second energy level. However, as you go from left to right, the nuclear charge is increasing. Lithium has three protons, so therefore the charge on the nucleus is positive three. Fluorine has nine protons, so the nuclear charge is positive nine. And so what's happening as you go from left to right, the effective nuclear charge is increasing. And so that causes the atomic radius, which I'm going to write AR, to decrease. So because the nuclear charge increases, those extra protons, they have a stronger effect on the outer valence electrons. And so they pull those electrons toward the nucleus, making it smaller. So let's see if we can uh, draw a picture. So let's draw lithium and fluorine. So lithium has a nuclear charge of positive 3 and fluorine has a charge of positive 9 in its nucleus. Now this is the first shell of lithium and this is the second shell. This is the first shell of fluorine and that's the second shell. In the first shell both of these atoms contain two electrons. Lithium contains one valence electron. Fluorine has seven. Now, this electron is shielded by two electrons, so it fills an effective nuclear charge of plus one. To calculate it, you take this number three and subtract it by the two electrons. Now, the nucleus exerts a force of attraction on this electron. However, these electrons, they repel this electron, and so they shield it from the nucleus. Now, this particular valence electron, it fills an effective nuclear charge of positive 7, 9 minus the two core electrons. 
So as a result, the force that the nucleus exert on this electron is a lot stronger. And so that's why it pulls the electrons closer towards the nucleus, thus making the size of the atom smaller. And so as you go from left to right, the effect of nuclear charge increases, there's less shielding, and so the atoms become smaller. Now, what about going down a group? It turns out that the size of atoms gets bigger as you go down, and it gets smaller as you go up. But let's focus on going down. So sodium is a lot bigger than lithium, and potassium is even bigger. Now, I'm running out of space here, so I'm just going to write those two. So this is going to be Na, and this is going to be K. The atomic radius of sodium is 186 picometers, and potassium is 227. So clearly, we can see that as you go down, atoms are getting bigger. The atomic radius is increasing. The question is why. So let's compare lithium and sodium. So once again, lithium has a positive 3 charge in the nucleus. Sodium has a charge of 11. Now, lithium has two energy levels. However, sodium contains three energy levels. So now you can see why sodium is a lot bigger than lithium. It's due to the extra energy level that was added. So as the principal quantum number increases, then the orbital sizes is increasing. And as a result, the atomic radius goes up. And that's why sodium is bigger than lithium, because sodium has three shells, lithium has two. So the more energy levels you have, the bigger the atom. In the first shell, lithium has two. In the last shell, it has one. And so if you look at the effect of nuclear charge on that electron, it's going to be three minus two, which is plus one. In the case of sodium, we have two in the first, 10 in the second, and 1 in the last one. The effect of nuclear charge on that valence electron is 11 minus 10, so it's plus 1. So as you go down in a group, the effect of nuclear charge doesn't change. So for all of the alkali metals in a single column, they have the same effect of nuclear charge. So the effect of nuclear charge doesn't play a role in the atomic size that we see in a column. It only plays a role as you go from left to right because it changes as you go from left to right. But within a column, the effect of nuclear charge is the same. So just to summarize, as you go from left to right, the reason why atoms get smaller is because the effect of nuclear charge increases and there's less shielding. But as you go down a group, the size of the atoms, the atomic radius, increases because there's more energy levels. The sizes of the orbitals are getting bigger. Now let's work on some problems. Which atom is larger? Is it calcium or magnesium? So these two are alkaline earth metals. Magnesium exists above calcium. And we know that as you go down a group, the atomic size increases. So let's say if this is magnesium, we should expect calcium to be bigger. And so the answer is calcium. The atomic radius of magnesium is 160 picometers. And the atomic radius of calcium is 197 picometers. So calcium is significantly bigger than magnesium. Now what about part B? Silicon or phosphorus? Silicon is to the left of phosphorus. And we know that as you go towards the right, atoms decrease in size. So we should expect silicon to be bigger than phosphorus. The atomic radius of silicon is 117 picometers, and the atomic radius of phosphorus is 110. 
So silicon is a little bit bigger than phosphorus. Now what about strontium versus sulfur? Which one's bigger? So strontium is an alkaline earth metal and sulfur is somewhere towards the right and basically above strontium. Now atoms get bigger as you go down and as you go to the left. They get smaller as you go to the right. So basically atomic size increases in this direction. So we should expect that strontium should be a lot bigger than sulfur. The atomic radius of strontium is 215 picometers and for sulfur it's 104. So the atomic radius is more than twice the value of sulfur in the case of strontium. So strontium is bigger. Now what about magnesium versus iodine? Which one will win? So magnesium is found in the upper left corner of the periodic table and iodine is towards the right and down. So which one's going to be bigger? For a setup like this, it's best to look at the values. Magnesium has an atomic radius of 160 picometers. And iodine is 153. So magnesium is slightly bigger than iodine. Now let's work on this example. Rank the following in order of increasing atomic size. So let's place these elements in their respective position on a periodic table. So cesium is an alkali metal on the bottom. Tin is found in group 4, but it's still relatively on the bottom. And uh, neon is all the way up here. And then here is going to be selenium and chlorine. So as we said before, atomic size increases as you go to the left and as you go down. So the atomic size increases towards cesium and francium. So we should expect that cesium is going to be very big and uh, neon is going to be very small. And it should increase in that relative order. Let me make this a little bit bigger. The atomic radius of cesium is 265 picometers, and for tin, it's 140, and for selenium, it's 117, and for chlorine, it's 99, and in the case of neon, it's 69. So therefore, we should start with the smallest one, and then write it towards the largest one, since we're writing it in order of increase in size. So chlorine is bigger than neon, and selenium is bigger than chlorine, and tin is bigger than selenium, and cesium is the largest of them all. So that's how you could rank it in order of increase in atomic size. So you want to start from writing the smallest one on the left side, and then write the biggest one on the right side.